Welcome to day seven and eight of being homeless and my first official week in a shelter. If this is your first time seeing my channel, please subscribe and please give it a like and a share. Thank you so much. This is the update. Being in a shelter for one week has changed my life. It made me look at a different perspective. With the resources that are available for this place, I will never ever take it for granted because of what they've done for me so far. Taking advantage of this situation is being a complete asshole to everybody. Not listening to what they want you to do and not participating and trying your resources. That would be taking advantage of this place. But if you listen to the rules, pay attention, and you move forward, they will move you forward in this facility. I first started off being in a bunkhouse with about 50 women and last night around 10.30 at night they said do you want a dorm and that's what everybody wants. A dorm is you get your own little cubicle type thing and you have space, you get a full size closet, I mean a full size closet with um, a padlock so you never lose your stuff. When I was in the room with the 50 women, you get a locker. And I had my, my backpack and my bag and my dog. That was all I had. Um, this place has provided the following. I can eat, I can sleep, I can shower, I can use the bathroom for free. For free. And this is for resources and for people who have lost everything. There's not too many people that I know that would fake being homeless for attention. This is real raw, uncut, uh, a situation that, that changed me. And if you're new to my channel, I lost my apartment back in November last year, 2021, due to COVID. I had a business I ran and that shut down because of COVID, so I decided to write my story instead and my story wasn't finished yet. I had to be able to put other things in my story before I was ready to go. I've been working on my story for the last two years and it's finally able to be released. The updates are, I keep the updates on my YouTube channel and my book covers everything up until a couple weeks ago. So if you wanna keep in touch, this is the perfect spot. If you want me to do a video of a full, a full tour of the dorm, uh, hit the like button if you like to see that because I would love to share with you guys the new location of where I'm at. I wish every major city could have this resource or this place because there would be no more people on the streets. They would have a place to come to regroup themselves. I've met a lot of people here, a lot of women this is a women and family uh, place. And it's a gated community. There's different houses that you get uh, connected to. And I've met some pretty interesting people here. And I created a voice, a backbone, a place to call my home for now. And I'm still considered homeless, even though I have a roof over my head. I'm in between homes. And the steps that I've done so far are phenomenal. Um, in one week's time, I have my medical and I am using the resource of Medicaid. And there are some people who judge it. They say, oh, you're abusing the system. No, I'm not. I'm using it for the right reasons. I don't have a job. I'm trying to rebuild my business. So that's what I'm working on to be able to um, reboot myself and to have my business back again and hopefully in full swing before my birthday in August. This place has provided me my medical and food stamps. And again, people like, oh, food stamps, it has all this negative things and, and vibes and abuse and it's for people who truly need it. And I'm in that category. I'm in that statistic. I'm homeless. I don't have a car. I don't have a job. Therefore, I qualify. And I'm also a vegetarian. Even though they feed you here, I can only eat certain things. I can't eat meat and the majority, it has meat in it. But I do take 
them, I go check out breakfast, lunch, and dinner to see what's served. And because of the food stamps now, there's um, a nice gas station down the road that I get my snacks, my food, my veggies, my fruit. I get all that, and it's just literally like maybe an eight minute walk down the street. And it gives me the exercise. Before this place, I was for the last five years working on myself physically, mentally, emotionally, personally, spiritually, and everything in between. And I was stuck in the house. I wasn't really moving. Since I've been here, I've been averaging about 10,000 steps to 12,000 steps daily. And today was supposed to be my relaxation day. Yesterday I did yoga for the first time and it really relaxed my body. For those who don't know, I have multiple sclerosis and I'm not really that flexible, but this really taught me how to relax and to stretch and I'm feeling it today. So I was gonna use it as a down day to just relax and do whatever. I still did over 10,000 steps and plus I have my dog with me. So she gives me the encouragement and the being able to um, get out and about and mingle. And I've met so many cool people here they all have similar stories, but different backgrounds, but they all carry one very important thing. They were all taken advantage of by a man, brought down to their lowest point by a man, being on drugs because of a man. I'm in that category. And being in that category, um, I wish I didn't have to be in that category and for the other women too. They had it extra hard. When you have physical, mental, and emotional abuse by someone who takes advantage of somebody else, it, it's it's a disgrace. It's it's horrible to be able to go to go through that. But it's a learning experience. When you're with someone, it's either a learning experience or um, just uh, a lesson learned. And I've learned my lesson of what I don't want. And in order to know what you don't want is you have to experience it to figure out what you don't want. And I figured out that I'm not a traditional person. And there are people who are traditional that uh, don't understand other ways, alternatives. When you have a whole family of doctors and you wanna play the guitar and your family shut you out because you wanna play the guitar and they try to throw uh, traditional ways at you. And you're like, I've tried it, it's not my thing. And I get told, you need a job. Well, guess what? Because of my multiple sclerosis, I can't work for somebody else because my body can only tolerate it for so long. And I've been diagnosed in 2005. I have a tattoo here of the day I was diagnosed and that I'm an MS fighter. And I get triggered with stress, anxiety, and depression. It triggers my body, it triggers attacks. So I have to be very careful but this place, I'm at peace. I love it here. It's amazing. The people are wonderful. And when you, when you compliment the chef, meaning you tell management how wonderful their facility is, they hook you up by bumping you and getting you the hookup with being in a dorm. You get your own space. There's a common area where you can watch Netflix and everything else, and it's very peaceful it's very peaceful in this room there's 12 people in the room but it's separated from six six people on each side and i've only been here less than 24 hours in the dorm and i freaking love it i slept pretty good last night my dog was confused as to why we're in a new spot but we're not too far from where we used to be we're still in the same house just a different um, area of the wing so i'm very grateful um, yeah, so if you want to see a tour of this amazing facility, hit the like button and I'll do a tour video of the dorm and the area around. Thank you all so much and do me a huge favor. In order for me to not be homeless no more, I'm making the steps to do my best. And the steps are, in order for me to move, I need a car. But in order for me to get a car, I need new glasses because I can't see for shit. My glasses are tired and my eyes are tired, so I need to reboot myself with that. 
So on July 3rd, I have my new glasses and an eye exam on that day. Once I have that, then my next step is to get a car. There is a car dealership literally right across the street from this facility and a car that I've been eyeballing that I would really, really love to have. So in order for this to happen and for me not to be homeless, I need your help. If you'd like to know my whole story, I have a package deal. It has the story, it has a link to my uh, Facebook group, The Purple Tree. There's over 600 members who've been supporting and following my journey for the past five years. They've been amazing. And it, there's a link there for you to join. Also, there's a link to my service. People who know my story have a found respect for my service and what I do. And I have a found respect for the other people for knowing my story and respecting it. And I respect them too. So if you'd like to get in on this, in the description of this video, there is a link and it's $10. And that $10 is going to help me save up for a car. So if you'd like to help with this, um, go get yourself a copy. And this story is ready to be a movie. At the end of the story, there's information on how you can help make this a reality of a movie. I have the director picked out and all the actors and actresses picked out, and I've met the majority of them already, and they look like they're interested. So on that note, let's make it happen because I get enough money for my vehicle, then the next step is saving up for a home, and I'm excited about it because I want to move closer to family, being able to get my life where I need to be. So thank you all so much. God bless. And thank you so much again for the continued love and support for my journey.